Number two, discern how to please God with your living. I, I like that. I'm looking forward to meeting Paul, as I am all the Bible characters, but Paul had a way of just using the right words at the right time, obviously under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, to really cause us to sit up and think. Look at verse 10 with me there, Ephesians 5 verse 10. And Paul says, Try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. So let's let's learn from this chapter what is pleasing to the Lord. And the first thing is Paul is referring back to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5. And I read it earlier, but I just want to highlight a couple of words to you there to help you understand why he talks the way he does. Ephesians 1 verse 5, which I read earlier, said, He, that is God, predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ according to the purpose of of his will. And I draw to your attention those two words, purpose and will, God's will. And in the Greek language language which this was written, the word purpose means satisfaction or delight. It, It means purpose with desire and good pleasure. So good, just get that. It's a bit like a coin. I should have bought a coin. In Fiji I used a coin to illustrate this. But a coin has one side. And predestination has on one side purpose, that which brings God pleasure. That which God deliberately, consciously says, this makes me happy. And I am going to do things to make me happy. My purpose will be fulfilled because that's what brings me pleasure. And on the other side of the same coin of predestination, we have this thing called will. Now we all understand will. It's the will that you recognize in your little toddler when it first says to you, no. See, will. Will says, I have a mind of my own. Will says, I can think for myself and you are going to have to listen to me. I saw it in my children. My parents said I was a bad, good example of it. Good, bad, whatever. Uh huh. Okay, so here's God's will. The will word... So the word will, concussion brain, has two facets. One facet is an active facet, and it's, it speaks of determination. When God says, I will something, he says, I am determined about that thing. It's actively expressed through choice and purpose. So God says, I am determined to express to you my choice in this matter, and my purpose in this matter, and I'm going to exercise my volition, all my choices to make this thing happen. Now the flip side of this is also there's a passive side to God's will. And the Greek language has contained in it that the passive side of God's will shows his desire for pleasure. Uh Uh-huh. You see what's happened? So when God says, let me sort of wrap it up if I may, When God says he chose you, he predestined you to be his child through faith in Jesus Christ according to his, according to the purpose of his will, he's saying, I am determined for you to become the person who brings me pleasure. My will for your life is my purpose for your life, and only when you fulfill my purpose will I be happy with you. I will only be satisfied when my purpose is accomplished and fulfilled in your life. You see, God's purpose and his will are sort of synchronous. They are integrated. My friend, if you are feeling lost in life, if you are feeling an emptiness that you can't quite quantify, if you have the sensation that God is not at peace with you and that he is not happy with you, it is because you have yet to fulfill his purpose by surrendering entirely to his will through faith in Jesus Christ. And we're going to learn uh, shortly what that means. You please God by submitting to him, fulfilling his will in your life for his pleasure. I need to explain that just briefly. The devil comes along, he's, oh, that Jesus stuff's okay. You know, 
You just got to do the things you want the way he says and everything's okay. That's not what God says. God says, in order for my purposes for my your life to be fulfilled, you must surrender to my will, which brings me pleasure. You can't actually, of your own self, do anything that will fulfill my purpose for your life. Of yourself, you are not capable of bringing me pleasure until you are adopted into my son, Jesus Christ. That's why faith in Jesus Christ is so important. At that point, we become the fulfillment of his purpose and pleasure for our lives. Secondly, let your old life stay dead. God doesn't want the old life back, (laughs) and neither should you. 